Tawheed and shirk has been, de has been defined in Karbala very clearly by the heroes of Karbala, the leaders of Karbala, the winners of Karbala. And they are Hussein and his sister, and Abul Fadl Abbas also, of course, these days. Tonight, inshallah. <coughs> See his loyalty to Islam. See his sacrifice. See, he actually showed the meaning of, of patience and meaning of bravery, both. Both, if you want to see what does bravery mean and what does patience mean, come and see Abu al-Fadl Abbas alayhi salam. Brave, a brave person. See, just like his father. He was like his father, like his father. He was brave. People say that uh, why Hazrat Ali did not raise his sword against his enemies. See, Abul Fadl Abbas is showing you. It was because of obedience. You can see it. You can see it by yourself. You don't need to prove. Yeah, in the issue of Imam Ali alayhi salam, we need to prove that that Rasulullah had, um, you know, he advised him to keep silent and be patient and bear everything that will happen to him. Uh, this was a wasiyah for, of, of, from Rasulullah. Some people might deny it, and no, it's not wasiyah. But we say it, it was a wasiyah. But when you see Abu al-Fadl Abbas, you don't need to give any proof. Just it is in front of you. In front of you. Every time Abu al Abbas wanted to fight or punish the enemy, Imam Hussein said, "It is not the time." And he, what he did, he controlled himself. He controlled his his soul, and he did not raise the sword. He did not fight. He did not say, no, 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 I, I, I want to fight. I will teach them a lesson. Give me just one chance, and I will let them know. <coughs> Never said that. As Imam Hussain said, no, he said, no. This is the bravery, and this is shuja'ah, and this is the sabr. And from him, we now we know that why Imam Ali was silent. Of course, someone was for him, just like Hussein was for Abbas. Someone was for Ali who was stopping him from raising his sword. Did not raise his sword? Why he was very brave? Why he was silent? Yes, he was brave. That's why he was silent. If he was coward, he was just all the time just would raise his, his sword. If he was coward. But alhamdulillah, he was brave. Out of his bravery, he was able to control the situation and not to fight. Not to fight while having the power. This is patience. It's called patience. Patience is not helplessness. Right? So, Abul Fadl Abbas. Then we will see Imam Zain al Abidin alayhi <coughs> salam. Amazing. Every, every personality is this household so amazing really if if this household had only one of them it would be enough for them to be proud and and challenge the whole world that, that nobody has such a person and this is true even one if they had one just take Imam al Abidin for example if Ahlul Bayt had only Imam al Abidin should be enough for them to be proud. But they have 14 of this level and plus Abu al-Fadl Abbas which has no match in the whole history. No one can be equal to him in those qualities. Still we say that he is not in the level of those 14. Janab Zainab Salamullah Alayha.
among the women. See, a woman can be such strong and uh, brave and patient and can defeat a huge and big and strong dynasty. How can she defeat a king, apparently strong king? She was really an amazing example. So all these four who we are celebrating, alhamdulillah, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for uh, keeping am us among their followers. Just we pray that really we are, our, our following should be accepted from them, inshallah. And may Allah keep us among their followers and their supporters and the dua, dua makaram al-akhlaq that we are discussing is one of uh, uh, the uh, examples of those great teachings that we received from this Aima and especially Imam Zain al Abidin alayhi salam. In the Hadith of Allah al Mahdi Kitab Allah of Allah and the Shaytan al Rajim. Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim. Wal Asri in the Insan al Fi Husser illa Ladina Aman wa Amil Salihat wa Tawasu bil Haki wa Tawasu bil Sabr. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا أبي القاسم محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين واللعنة الدائمة على أعدائهم أجمعين من الآن إلى يوم الدين. As you know that we are talking in our second خطبة about جنة البقيع, the بقيع which was destroyed, and uh, as we are going to celebrate, إن شاء الله. After two days, the birthday of Imam Zainul Abidin alayhi salam. Whose grave is in Baqi and it was destroyed. So we actually, um, every week, speaking about one single fact about Baqi. One thing that we need to discuss today, since it is the occasion of the birthday of Imam, fourth Imam, and also birthday of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. If you see today the grave of Imam Hussein alayhi salam and see his, uh, you know, tomb and see the shrine and uh, how amazing. Uh, those shrines are and how people come with patience and with uh, zeal and, and, and love from all around the world to visit him. You know that even the uh, grave of Imam Hussain alayhi salam also was destroyed many times. In the time of Mutawakkil, Mutawakkil Abbasi, even some some riwayat says Harun also tried to destroy it, and he did. But then uh, Ma'mun built it again, and then Mutawakkil came, and he ordered to uh, to eliminate the uh, even the signs of uh, the grave there, and to plow the the earth, and uh, just make it a plain field. And not only this, he tried to run water over it so that uh, no, uh, you know, kind of uh, symbol may remain. Uh, but of course, when Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, 
يريدون اللي يطفئوا نور الله بأفواههم. They they want to uh, you know put out the the nur of Allah. They they want to eliminate the nur of Allah, but Allah subhanahu wa taala want to keep it forever so that it can eliminate everything in this world. So Allah kept it. But the point here is to make only one point: is this that it shows, and it is in the history. And those very uh, important history books in is, in, in is Islamic world, uh, you know, all those history books mention that that in 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 the year when uh, Mutawakkil tried to uh, to destroy the grave of Imam Hussein Ali Salam in the shrine of Imam Hussein Ali Salam. This proves that in those days, it was uh, second or third, third actually, beginning of the third century, uh, Hijri century. It was just the beginning, at the time of Aima Ali Salam. It was the time of Tab'i Tabi'in. So it was means early times of Islam. And the grave was there, shrine was there, and the enemy tried to destroy it. Destroy what? If there was no grave, how, how, how can he destroy it? So it means there was something that he tried to destroy, and it was a shrine. And people would come there, and he stopped people from coming to visit uh, Imam Hussain's uh, grave. So those who wanted to go for pilgrimage, for ziyarat of Imam Hussain, he stopped them. It means there was a grave, there was a shrine, there were people coming for ziyarat and visit. Everything was there. And he destroyed it. So what is the point? The point is this, that when he destroyed this grave of Imam Hussein, which nobody can deny the fact, when he tried to destroy it, he never said, nobody said that sh this should be destroyed because this is shirk. See? This is a very important point. He never said, he, he never justified his act by saying, see, I'm destroying this because this is not allowed in Islam. And it was very easy for him to do it. And it was good for him to do it. Instead of taking the blame that he is enemy of Imam Hussein, you know, politically, he could use this justification that, no, I'm... I'm destroying these uh, shrines because it is haram to build shrine and it is haram uh, to visit the graves. But he did not make this point. It means at that time all Muslims, even the enemies of Ahlul Bayt, they knew that no, building the shrine is not haram. So anybody who is saying building haram, it is his, his, own, his, his own opinion, his own uh, bid'at that he is trying to introduce. Not, uh, you know, building the shrines is not bid'ah. But destroying it is, yes, bid'ah. And it is haram to disrespect uh, the personalities that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us to, to respect as personalities. And also their houses. The grave is the house of, of the imams. Their houses. Inshallah, we'll talk about it. How Quran is ordering us to respect the house where such great people uh, live. Salawat bar Muhammad wa ali.